All right, we're coming together today for the January 9th Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission meeting. And uh, we are in compliance with the Open Meeting Act filing of the meeting notice and posting of the agenda, I believe. It says we are. We hope so. It's yeah. Better than <laughs> yeah. I'd like to record the uh, members present and absent, please. Chairman Conway. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Potter. Secretary Amos. Here. Commissioner Putnam. Here. Commissioner Hunter. Here. Commissioner Ray. Commissioner Ritz. Here. Great, thank you. I need a motion to approve the minutes. I shall move. Second. Call the roll, please. I did. I shall move. Secretary Amos. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Well, it's nice to be a stand-in chairman today to uh, announce the retirement of my good friend and second longest tenured person in the commission, Dale. And uh, Dale, you and I have been meeting here for quite some time, 20 years, and uh, you've been an exemplary employee and always professional and great, and it's a pleasure to be able to announce your retirement, not because you're leaving, <laughs> but. <laughs> and uh, Victor is going to take over here. I, I think you were doing uh, just fine. That's your interim chair. I like this thing. Uh, this is, uh, it is a, a day to celebrate Dale. It's uh, uh, not one I've looked forward to, really. I'll, I'll say that uh, unequivocally. Uh, I'll talk a little more about that later, but uh, really pleased to have with us today uh, Senator, believe it or not, he decided to stay around and actually get more involved in this thing, and, and uh, uh, he, he probably will want to go back to OBNDD, longtime director of OBNDD, Darrell Weaver. Where are you, Senator? You're somewhere. He's uh, here. He is Dale's senator. Uh, Dale's going to help him with legislation after he retires. Well, I just had to say that. <laughs> but, Senator, I know that you have a proclamation, and I know you have some work going on across the street, so I'd like to call upon you. I know you probably want to read it and present it to Dale, and we're just so pleased you're here. Well, thank you, Judge. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Board. Uh, you, you know, I have, a, I have really a, a heart for public service when it comes to state employees. I've spent 28 years myself, and I understand it. Would you mind? I'm going to kind of go do this, if I may, because I have a, I think that there's probably, but, you know, after I spent many, many years at the Bureau of Narcotics, almost three decades, and ran the agency for nine years, uh, I, I, honestly, and I told people on the doorstep, I, I said, once I left, 20, I'll never go back to 23rd and Lincoln as long as I live. Uh, and our mamas and our grandpapas told us not to ever say never. So I felt led to go back and run, but I really have a heart for people like Dale. And, uh, and I will always, as long as I'm uh, across the street, I'll always appreciate what state employees do and what our mission is. And there's nothing more important, you know, we're, 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 none of us are naive toward the fact that we need to diversify economy. And I think the aeronautics and the things that we're doing in the state is so critical and, uh, and, and very supportive of it. So uh, all of my constituents down in Senate District 24 have the same uh, resume is Dale. They're all uh, leaders, it just seems like. So, and that's what we want from all of our citizens. Dale, if you'll come up, please. I'm going to go ahead and read this, if I may. And uh, the state of Oklahoma citation for Dale Williams, whereas Dale William Williams. <coughs> Excuse me. Will retire as a deputy director of airports division from the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission after 21 years of dedicated service to the state of Oklahoma on, on January 31st, 2019. And whereas Dale Williams is not only a respected Oklahoman, but he should be among the most honored in our nation for his service in the United States Navy, 
and in the Vietnam War. Thank you for your service. And whereas Dale Williams, a civil engineering graduate of the University of Oklahoma, has several professional accolades, such as being awarded the, quote, Pioneer Award by the Oklahoma Airport Operators Association and the, quote, State Aviation Distinguished Service Award by the National Association of State Aviation. And whereas the Oklahoma State Senate, acting on behalf of the citizens of the state of Oklahoma, appreciates the sacrifice and contribution put forth by Dell Williams each day of his service and sends best wishes for happy retirement. Now, therefore, pursuant to the file motion of Senator Darrell Weaver, the Oklahoma State Senate extends to Dale Williams sincere congratulations and directs that this citation be uh, presented. If I, wait, if, if I may, I've got one more quick one, and I'm not going to read this, but uh, uh, my, my representative, Senator Mark, or Representative Mark McBride, could not be here. We're not going to read this citation, Dale, but I know on behalf of Mark, my friend Mark, and uh, wanted to be here, but, uh, you know, a lot going on already uh, across the street. And so I just want to give you this. We're not going to read it, but from uh, Representative Mark McBride, also from the State House of Representatives, okay? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. And Senators graciously agreed to help me with our drug free workplace enforcement. So. <laughs> 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 thank you, Senator. There are. Uh, 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 hold on, Dale. For the 20 years that I've known you, I didn't know you were a veteran. Thank you for your service. And I was just going to thank you for your service in here, but thank you for your. Service to the country and taking care of my family and me. Yeah. And this picture right here, what year was that? Like, was that a high school picture? <laughs> it does look a little more red. Uh, oh, you must have had a big victory that week, and that made Dale glow. So, yeah. Item five, Victor. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, today and, and commissioners. Uh, I think many of you attended the Oklahoma Women. Aviation and Aerospace Day event in Tulsa last month. Uh, it was a fantastic success. I think we had upwards toward 400 people. Uh, the tours, and I had our commission meeting, of course, at Tulsa International, uh, which made Commissioner Potter real happy and uh, made the Tulsa International Airport real happy and the Tulsa Airport Authority. But really had some great people there, like Mona there from uh, Senator Langford's office. And uh, we will again have it uh, this year and it will be at AAR, I believe, this year, out at Will Rogers. We're working on that. We're working on that. Probably I just, Don Whitakum, you'll have to help me now. But uh, I was going to say, we have a gentleman in the audience back there that could pull that off pretty quick. Yeah, one, of their, one, of their, one of their grand alumni, he can help me out on that, but we'll, I think we'll make that happen. It will happen in Oklahoma City this year. The uh, Oklahoma City Chamber annually hosts uh, State of Aerospace Luncheon. Uh, and that occurred last month as well. Uh, focus was we had, they had a, I won't get this right, but either a deputy undersecretary or something at the Department of Defense was really, I thought, but it was really a great presentation. They had it at the Reed Center this year. Uh, I think in the, as they have before Commissioner Ritz, I, I think perhaps this year there will be some, some focus as well on the Monroney Aeronautical Center, which is a big part of our aerospace community here in Oklahoma City. And we're very proud of that and what it does for the, the nation, for our nation. So uh, we'll, we'll get them to, to put that on wide angle a little bit. The uh, last item in, in my director's report, most of my comments are going to be in the legislative report today, is the, uh, a, a, an item really that we had originally missed in the FAA reauthorization bill. Those, those can get somewhat lengthy, and, and I'll admit I don't have them memorized. But as I think all of you know, because of the asset study back in 2012, that was a process of, 
process of, of classifying uh, general aviation airports at, a, at the federal level, uh, those that were in the federal system. At that point in time, I think actually we had 24, I may be one or two off on the number of unclassified airports, uh, GA airports, non-primary airports. Those became ineligible for any federal funding. Uh, we have not, so any propositions there over the last six, seven years have been bare bones because it's been state funding. Uh, they have gone down because there was a second review of asset, and there's even been more since then. I think we're at 20 or 21 now. You have a list of the unclassified non-primary airports in Oklahoma at the, at the back of your packet. Uh, that's a record available to anyone who would like it. Uh, what's in the FAA reauthorization bill is the fact that uh, actually there's, there's going to be over the next two years, over the next two federal fiscal years, there's going to be an opportunity for in each one of those years, and then that, that's the extent of the authority of those airports to actually receive up to $150,000 in funding. And Grayson's going to touch more upon this in, in his uh, remarks to you because we're going to make a proposal to you about those, about those particular airports. But it's, this, it's a good thing. Uh, they're in our system. They're in the federal system. Uh, there are certain standards. And no doubt about it, it it's, it's difficult when they're not uh, eligible for federal funding. So this, in a sense, they're going to be eligible the next two federal fiscal years. Any questions? Okay, okay. Uh, I'm reminded by my trustee assistant here, Sandra Shelton. We actually need to skip back for a moment, if we could, Mr. Chairman, to item number four. That uh, I'm a little bit, because of the event we have planned for Phil, I'm a little bit uh, confused. But we have a very special award for Dale uh, for his many years of, of meritorious service. Uh, and I'd like to present that now that we're all very proud of. And I hope you will be as well. So, Dale, you're going to have to come up again. <laughs> I know you love this. We'll save that. I'll do it one more time. <laughs> so, I can barely pick this because we got the real deal. But don't worry, acrylic really wasn't any cheaper. So, you know how I am. Uh, but this is a outstanding service award uh, presented to you from the Aeronautics Commission. Uh, presented to Dell Williams for 20 years of exemplary, is that what that was? And dedicated service to the aviation community and the citizens of Oklahoma. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Has Vic talked to you about that consulting contract he wants you to have yet? <laughs> yeah, it'll be a while, but we'll, we'll make sure and comply with the ethics rules. Oh, and gosh, you come in at an opportune time, Mr. Kana. Uh, so now I think we can go to uh, item six. Okay, item six, Vic. We have a position to fill. Yes, and let me in at this opportunity. I don't, I don't think. Don't worry, Secretary Patterson. I don't think we'll be prosecuted for an Open Meeting Act violation. He couldn't join us last month, but uh, we have with us today our, our brand new airport engineer, somewhat brand new. And uh, Ben, and Ben, you're gonna, I'm not gonna slay your last name, so you'll have to state it. Uh, really happy to have Ben, civil engineer, uh, got his seal and everything, so he's gonna start doing preliminary engineering reports and design, sorry consultant, no, just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. We're gonna go easy on Ben for a while, but. Ben's with us and has uh, been in uh, civil engineering for some time. You want to? Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Ben, Ben Nakadi, and uh, I'm going to be the <laughs> new airport engineer. I'm very happy that I'm working for uh, Oklahoma Aeronautic Commission, and I hope uh, we all have a good time together. I like it. Good time. <laughs> <laughs> So this item is, uh, we, we have uh, learned here recently that uh, uh, Catherine will be leaving us, so we will need to fill that position. And I'd ask for your approval now to, do, to move forward with that uh, per our statutory requirements uh, so that we can hopefully get that filled before 
Catherine actually departs, which will be late or at the end of March, I believe. Right. Okay. So. Well, that's interesting news. We're going to miss you. You've been a great employee. Yep. Well, sadly, I need to ask for a motion. So moved. Call the roll, please. Secretary Aye. Commissioner Potter, uh, Patton, I'm sorry. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Great. Um, item seven, Vic, you want to talk to us about these partnership scholarships? Yes, uh, very briefly, uh, this is something you all are all familiar with. Uh, we partner with the Oklahoma Department of uh, Commerce and other state and local entities at, at uh, various aviation shows, trade shows, conferences throughout the year. Uh, coming up is the MRO America Conference. Uh, it's a big, that's a big one for us uh, because of the nature of our uh, aviation and aerospace industry. Uh, so much of it is MRO. We will be there with a state booth where, where is that this year? It's a good question. I think it may be Atlanta. I think. I'll check that for you, Commissioner. Sorry, I don't okay. have that info. Okay. Uh, and then the second one, which we can consider, is the Air Venture at Oshkosh, with the, which we've been going to for a number of years, uh, with the Enid Development Authority, and that will continue, even though, as most of you know. The head of the Enid Development Authority will be the executive director of the Department of Commerce in the next administration, Brent Kisling. But we have a great relationship with Brent. Look forward to that. And he's been very helpful to the airport up there, as I think several of you know, uh, particularly when we extended the runway 2,000 feet. And uh, we'll also be working with, and I've talked to you many times about ACES, the ACES program, uh, which is in the Department of Commerce, uh, which is really our what by and large is our CAD ski and OAI, which was originally and formerly in, in OAC. But uh, that is uh, underway now, uh, is, and the head of that program is with us today, and many of you know him, Don Whittacombe. And glad to have you, Don. Thank you for being here. Uh, but ACES will be a big part of these shows as well. So I would ask for your consideration and approval. I move for approval. Second. Please call the roll. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Conway. Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. All right. Uh, next item is the financial report. Jane? Secretary Patterson. Um, in your packet, you will find the FY19 financial information, and the numbers are based on uh, November 30th. Um, we had at the November 30th, we had a total cash balance of 5.5 million with just under 7 million encumbered. And then we have an additional 1,561,724 that's still in the airport construction program that remains to be granted for FY19. Um, the year-to-date expenditures for FY19 total $2,381,817 with 1.7 million of that being airport construction program projects. And that compares to two point. Two million two hundred and fifty nine thousand four dollars in the prior year, with one point six being um, the construction projects. Our statutory deposits for the month of November totaled three hundred and eighty five thousand nine hundred and fifty five dollars, which compares to five hundred and forty eight thousand twenty dollars for the month of November last year. Our year-to-date deposited statutory revenue is $1,262,260 compared to $1.6 million last year. Um, the final numbers for December <coughs> just came in on the report today. They weren't available till today, so I did um, 
checked them and we collected $247,201 for December, which last year compared to $346,367,000. So we need to pick it up a little bit. <laughs> um, and then as always, the third page shows um, the statutory revenues which are received from the aircraft uh, registration fees, exercise tax, and fuel tax collections. And I think that's about it for me, unless you have some questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Item nine is the uh, legislative update, Victor and Sandra. Commissioners, I've, I've been a bit remiss, a lot going on, a special day, but I, want, I would like to, and I didn't tell her I was going to do this, but I don't, given the nature of her work, I don't think that I will embarrass her, but very happy to have with us today Senator Brenda Stanley. Senator, if you wouldn't mind, thank you very much for being here. She has replaced Senator Jack Fry from the Midwest City area, so we know she's going to be very integral and, and important insofar as supporting aviation and aerospace. She's got a big employer out that way. Uh, that's the largest employer in the state called Tinker. So I, I think we're counting on her and I think she's told us, I think we, we're, we're rather safe in that bet. So appreciate you very much being here. Uh, one quick thing on the financial, as always, you just see again, I wanna reiterate it. It's just an up and down proposition and it largely depends upon <laughs> what's going on in the world and it's gonna impact the purchase of aircraft because that's 92% of our revenues, the aircraft excise tax. Yeah, I will, I was happy at the, and I think Jane's already mentioned this perhaps last month, we were not impacted by the cap. Uh, we did not receive over $4.5 million in FY18. So we, we were, I think, impacted the previous year, FY17. Uh, 1.2 million uh, was swept and put into the general revenue fund. So that's a good uh, tease me up for the, the uh, this report. Uh, I'm just going to review with you since the session is, is really here. It will officially start uh, next month, but uh, our, our probably number one goal this, this next session is repealing that $4.5 million cap. Uh, I'm not going to get real lengthy on this, but we know how that is, that is an aircraft excise tax. It's paid by aircraft owners, people that buy aircraft in the state of Oklahoma and base them here. Uh, the proposition always was between the state and implied contract and implied trust. We'll pay this in, but we want this by and large to be used on aviation infrastructure around the state. Uh, that cap came about in 2015. There was not a cap. We had, we had been receiving 100% of those revenues since uh, probably FY 2002. Uh, and it's, they're impacted enough by the 18 exemptions, which is more than any other state. So this we want to get the get the cap removed and the, and the time seems appropriate. Um, the next item is directly related to that, that uh, we are going to undertake and we've reserved some bills and you might have seen a recent article uh, uh, talking about, really haven't worked with him that closely on what, what his efforts are, but Senator Newhouse is focused on uh, three of those exemptions. Uh, only one of those have re really uh, emphasized, and that's, that's the exemption, uh, not really so much the commercial airline part of that, which is how charter aircraft are, are fit in, or how they get classified and get that exemption. We, we, we treat them as a commercial airline under our statutes. Uh, but he is also focused on the agricultural aviation exemption, and uh, well, what he wants to do is, is basically eliminate that as well as the exemption for uh, commercial airlines. Uh, I think his reasoning being, which I'm, is we, we originally did that exemption in hopes of, probably due to the fact that American's maintenance base was here, uh, that perhaps that would entice an American or, or other airlines to base part of their fleet here, and, and that has not occurred. So I think he's all part almost of the, the incentive evaluation commission that the legislature established probably like four or five years ago that's been reviewing all of our tax incentives, which ones are obsolete, which ones make sense, and which ones just need to go because they're not good for the state. Uh, they do, they, they <coughs> work every year. Uh, that's headed up by a fellow named Lyle Rogo uh, from Duncan, the economic development director down there. And uh, 
they, they, they have focused upon these uh, exemptions as well. So we continue to do that, and, and uh, uh, Senator Newhouse obviously does as well. The third one, ensuring aviation safety, that is really about uh, uh, specifically and uh, about the, the issue of making certain that development is compatible with aircraft operations, both civilian and military. Uh, so obviously what comes to your mind, and that would be appropriate, the work that uh, we have been uh, mightily engaged in in so far as uh, wind farms and the development and the erection of wind turbines, uh, not against the wind energy industry at all. Uh, our effort has been simply that must be balanced and we must respect the need for not only the military but civilian aviation uh, to be able to fly around safely in our skies. Uh, the military is particularly affected because much of the training airspace they use uh, is uh, pretty close to where the top of these turbine blades get and that makes those uh, military training routes somewhat hard to use. Uh, we are very engaged in this. We've been engaged in the rulemaking at the Corporation Commission uh, to implement the provisions that the legislature passed last session. There apparently were some problems with those provisions. That's why we're engaged in a legislative effort this session. We're talking to wind energy companies. We're, we're trying to uh, reach compromises uh, so that we can go forward with something that will work. Uh, bottom line being here that we've, we've got to have something that protects particularly the military training airspace, but also ensures the safety of, of like agriculture aviation operators. Uh, we've got to have something of that nature erected that, that still provides for a robust wind energy industry as well. That's our issue, that's our only issue. We're, any other issues about wind energy, we are not involved in those issues. Ours is one of aviation safety only. So we'll keep you up to date on those efforts uh, we continue to work that very hard. <clears throat> and then the last one is something that uh, we believe we're doing in partnership with the Oklahoma Municipal League, but that's to provide immunity for airport sponsors from tort claims uh, for certain activities that negligence claims could be bought, brought against those airport sponsors by and large cities, uh, with the exception of the University of Oklahoma. Uh, that is something that Senator Daniels uh, Commissioner Potter's uh, home senator, and she's chair of the Judiciary Committee, is helping us with. Uh, thank you, Secretary Patterson, because uh, we're meeting with one of your ACE lawyers, an old friend of mine that I used to be a supervisor, Greg Eldridge, uh, to get, because I know he handles tort claims for you, and he, there's probably nobody better to uh, talk to about that issue than Greg. So that's, that's our agenda for the next session. Uh, would stand for any questions about those items. Questions, okay. Item 10. Item 10 is, uh, this is something that uh, I've talked many times with Commissioner Hunter about, so I'm gonna ask him for his help on this for elaboration and, and his passion uh, to visit with you all about. But I think everyone in this room is probably aware we're facing a fairly acute pilot shortage. Uh, what can be done about it to wrestle with that? Uh, Commissioner Hunter likes to say, we can keep doing great work on airports, but it maybe isn't going to matter or isn't going to matter if we don't have airports to, if we don't have <coughs> air pilots to take off and land uh, at those airports. Uh, this is the, the basic concept here is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner, but uh, the basic concept is to provide an incentive to certified flight instructors uh, so that they will train more pilots, recruit more people to become pilots, and once they actually are past their pilot examinations and get their credentials, uh, get an incentive of either just $2,500 straight out, uh, that's how we've talked to Commissioner Hunter about it, uh, we're working with Senator Bergstrom on this, or it may be some kind of, of tax credit. Uh, I, I do expect, and I, and I know Commissioner Hunter is gonna make some comments, there, there will be some opposition. There's people, the word's going out, oh, it's good times again at the state capitol, uh, so let's go you know, grab for the gold. A lot of folks are sticking their hands out, uh, so we'll definitely have to have our ducks in a row uh, on this one. Uh, we were very successful a number of years ago, 10 years ago with the engineer tax credits, which no state has replicated for aerospace only. 
uh, and no other industry has, has been able to obtain those in the state of Oklahoma. That took us two sessions. So somewhat modeled after that, but I'd say just loosely, uh, I'll stop. Commissioner? The only thing I would offer is that we've, we've done a great job with those engineering tax credits and, and creating aircraft engineers, creating, I mean, jobs. We have a robust economy that generates, is it $44.6 billion a year in this state? For the, in, the industry does. The, the industry does. Impact. Uh, and approximately $350 million a year in state tax revenue as a result of all those jobs. But those jobs are going to go away. You've, you've trained up all these A&P mechanics, and that's wonderful. But those A&P mechanics aren't going to have anything to work on. Because when the number of pilots cuts in half in 10 years, um, my objective isn't to give a stipend to the flight instructors, but to bring enough flight instructors into the state. We've got to attract them here. We've got to bring them. Uh, right now, the airlines are even writing the CFIs. And a farmer will tell you that if you raid his seed, he has nothing to plant for next year. You, you can't get rid of the CFIs. You can't pull them away. Uh, we've got to have CFIs. We've got to incentivize students. Uh, or we're facing a, a very real problem. And I don't think anybody really understands just how big it is. I'm going to need, uh, just like our other initiatives, so I will need, this is an action item. So, When $350 uh, million dollars a year of tax revenue cuts in half, what and, are they putting back in? And, and <laughs> we don't, and, and, a, and I think all of you know, we don't, those are by and large sales taxes. Uh, that's an estimate. We know that, that uh, for the 440 on-airport businesses are paying $500 million in taxes. I did some down and dirty math, basically, but I think I'm pretty close based upon the sales tax rate of the state versus the average sales tax rate of the local communities. And I think it comes out about 330 to 350 million that the state is getting going into the general revenue for use of all state programs and services. We're not getting any of that. Does that include state income tax from all those AMPs? There is state income tax. Uh, I, I doubt it includes state income tax by a, paid by any aviation workers. I doubt, I doubt that's in that. That is by those on airport businesses, that, uh, and that was part of our economic impact. When those jobs go away, that's a bigger impact. So yeah. that's the proposition. Have I got the language, kind of what we've given to Senator Bergstrom? Yeah, certainly. Good morning, Commissioners. I spoke to Senator Bergstrom yesterday at the Capitol, and I think what he is going to try to do is two different plans. One plan <coughs> would be to have an incentive for CFIs, just like the engineer tax credit, but there would be a cap. So if their state obligation of tax was $2,500, they might receive a $2,500 tax credit and would not be responsible for those state taxes, much like the engineer tax credit works. The other plan would be, and I call it the FLAPS program, which uh, you need FLAPS to land, and it's the Fly Local Aviation Program, which would be administered through the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. And that would actually be a program that might be administered by someone like Catherine or Jen, and it would um, be an incentive program for CFIs, and they would apply for a grant of some sort. It might be done through grants or something like that. And for every pilot that they certify through statute, it will be outlined what those certifications are required. And we are working on the language now. Uh, but, but that would be a separate program. There would be a tr what they call a trigger at the legislature that only if the um, legislature appropriates the funding would the program be enacted. That was the problem that we had with CADSQ is that we had the burden of the or not necessarily burden, but we had the function of the CADSQ program and we never received that appropriation. And so if the legislature failed to appropriate, the trigger would go into effect and the, and the commission would be protected from an unfunded mandate. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions? No, I just want to address Commissioner Hunter there just a little bit. I've been in aviation education for a long, long time as a past president of the University Aviation Association, which is a nationwide uh, entity that brings all the higher education entities together. 
we identified the critical need for CFIs years and years ago. And what was happening was airlines, the age 60 rule got moved to 65. And so for five years, we had a nice surplus of pilots. I've always heard the pilot shortage is coming, the pilot shortage is coming. Well, if you look at the history, a lot of airlines went bankrupt like Braniff and Eastern and so on and dumped those pilots on the economy for aviation. And they filled a lot of positions that would have been needed had they stayed viable. Well, over the years, I've seen CFIs get hired so quickly now that a couple of regional airlines are actually not flying airplanes because they don't have pilots to put in them. So they got together and the regional airlines came up with this program. It's called Envoy cadet program. There's other ones out there, but I'm most familiar with Envoy. And the cadet program actually starts right after the pi private pilot. And they come in and they interview these individuals and they decide at that point if they're going to be a cadet trainer at that early stage of their flying career. And they mentor them, they give them advice, and they come in and talk about the industry. Well, after that, it kind of doesn't change much until they become a CFI. And that's where the incentive comes in. And this is good for commercial flight schools uh, or university aviation programs. Part 141 for sure, and I'm not quite sure about Part 61. But they incentivize them by hours. So at 500 hours, they get $1,000. At 600, they get 1,000. And this is their CFI flight time. As they graduate, they get another bonus of $17,000. So there's a lot of incentive now for students to stay in the CFI program. And so the money is there. The problem is they're still leaving. You've got people that are going to accelerated flight programs because the most important thing is the line number. The earlier the line number you get, the more pay you're going to get. And it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars later in their career. So we're always going to have this exodus, and it should be. It should be. CFIs need to go on with their life in the aviation career that they choose and not just be a professional trainer. So the other part of that aspect is at Southeastern, I know for sure, because that's where I was most recent, 80% of the students are not Oklahomans. When I was at OSU, it was a similar number but not quite as high. Out of all the years I was at Southeastern, 16, 17 years, 10 of them still reside in Oklahoma. And that's a lot of students. So we're talking thousands of students that have gone through the program and only 10 still live in Oklahoma, but they, they are professional pilots. So they are commuting to Dallas and then commuting elsewhere to fly the airplane. So I'm real, the money's already there. So there's already incentive for pilots, CFIs, to stay a CFI for a while and produce the pilots out there. So I'm really kind of curious if $2,500 more would be much of an incentive when you look at the $22,000, basically, that's out there now. I agree. It's not much of an incentive to keep them here. My primary interest is in finding ways to get kids in 16-, 17-, 18-year-olds in high school as programs, as an alternative to some of the shop classes that we've seen, uh, there were two high schools, I think, uh, Ada and one other one, was it Muskogee? I don't re recall, that had programs that were very active, 20, 30, 40 students that were coming up as new private pilots. Those are the programs that we need all the way across the board. We need them in every school in Oklahoma. That directly impacts Oklahomans. They, and while they're kids and they're going to move away and that's wonderful, they're going to come home eventually. Uh, aviation, the crisis we have, the pilot, the pilot shortage that we have is becoming very, very real. And if we can't keep CFIs here, we can't train up those kids. I can tell you I can't hire enough CFIs. I can't get them, can't find them. That's common. I mean, if, if you go to any flight school, that is common across the country. I, I don't care where you go. 
right now I know that Southeastern has 20 students on the wait list because they don't have CFIs. Even with that program, they are waitlisting students. OS, or OSU, I've heard unconfirmed that they're up to 100 students waiting to fly. Wow. Don't have the CFIs to teach them. We'd have to find a way to get the CFIs in here and to incentivize these, these young kids to fill the ranks that have long since dwindled. Every 10 years, there are half as many pilots as there were 10 years prior. Mm -hmm. And that's a trend that's gone on for the past 30, 40 years that I know of. Uh, if that continues much longer, mm -hmm. we're, we, we've provided some really beautiful airports that aren't gonna have anybody to land on them, and we've got a lot of AMP mechanics that are gonna be out of work because there's not, <laughs> there not gonna be any planes for them to fix. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is a huge, huge impact to the state of Oklahoma and our tax revenue. I, I guess what I'm coming from is I, I just don't see the incentive for the dollars. I mean, I just don't see the, they, they've already thrown the money at it through Envoy programs and others. Far smarter would be for us to hire a marketing agency like Elevated Marketing or one of, one of those to actually engage in a program to actively incentivize and recruit young people to become pilots. Yeah. A, a public, public relations campaign. I'm 100% in support of everything around pilot shortage. I know that Grayson's aware of this, but in the FAA reauthorization, there's language that will deal nationally, not that it immediately will fix our issue in Oklahoma, but if we're going and presenting this before the state, we know that we've not been successful in some of the other areas that to me have been no-brainers. Whatever we do, I think we have to have the hook to say, how do we guarantee that this is going to help Oklahoma? I mean, Commissioner, you were talking about some of the initiatives that have been done and people leave the state. What you're talking about, which is to me a little bit different initiative, from the marketing standpoint is how do we get to that as far as um, exactly and that that's right. where my interest lies the uh, this legislation to create a $2,500 tax credit I don't think that accomplishes our goal either no I, I'm, I'm concerned that we're not going to get anywhere with that and be I shot agree. down and the other thing is if we're incentivizing uh, current CFIs to bring in and train pilots, then my concern would be, is there any hook that they stay in Oklahoma, or is that just helping that particular CFI? Your for every last CFI comment, we bring though, in, has, yeah. For every CFI we bring in, we potentially train up 5, 10, 20, 30 local kids. And if we could find a way to have a hook to say, you stay in Oklahoma for X amount of time even or something. The, even if the CFI leaves 10 years later, you've got their progeny, the kids that they've trained up that are from Oklahoma. You've got a national crisis, and if we can find a way to leverage it correctly, first step is identifying the problem. But once you find a way to fix the problem, that's an opportunity to basically commandeer a larger percentage of the aviation industry for our state from other states. I would agree. I think your last point, though, about getting to the heart of and using a marketing firm to get at exactly what we need to do but I haven't seen may any, be an easier... Any thing. targeted marketing efforts yeah. from any state agency, commerce or otherwise, including us. Mm -hmm. I mean... Sandra does does a great job, but that's not like a, a full-blown marketing agency like the ones that I employ. Uh, when I want the job done, those guys go out and, and they produce video footage. And um, I mean, it, it's an active assault on the marketplace. And we need something like that in aviation to encourage and drive a whole new generation of pilots. And if we can drive that new generation of pilots both kids here in Oklahoma as well as attracting others from out of state to make Oklahoma, to basically increase our market share instead of being at risk of losing that $350 million of state tax revenue every year, I'd love to see that number doubled. 
rather than having a bunch of legislators looking at their hands wondering, um, where did it go? It's only $150 million a year now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll feel that, but by the time they feel it, it's too late. What's the triggering event to compensate that CFI? Is that private or all the way up to commercial instrument where he's actually able to? If we've got the CFI here, we've got the benefit of the ones that he trains up during the duration he's here. That CFI leaves in 10 years, I understand that, but I've still got the pilots he trained up locally. And I want those pilots to be kids from our local high schools and universities. I, from, from where I'm coming from, I'd love to see our Votex <laughs> even offering flight opportunities. Partnering with local flight instructors. You mentioned 10 years, but you're lucky to keep them too. You really are. I mean, you, right now they're offering flight instructors $40,000 a year plus benefits and they're still leaving that quickly. It's just, I've been an instructor for many years and you just kind of get to the point where you need to pass the baton because you're burnt out with flight instructors. If you throw up your hands and you say, I don't care, let them all go, then you have no new pilots coming in. Well, I never said that. I'm just saying that you've, some of you've got to bring these them. issues have been <coughs> debated for 15 years that I know in UAA as well as this Aviation Accrediting Board, ABBY they call it, they're looking at it as well, working with the industry partners, trying to figure out a solution to this. They still haven't found one. So I agree with you, we need more pilots, period. How we do need we to get set up them? a round table and sit down and figure out exactly how to solve this. So because again, agree with. in uh, business, if we can identify the problem, mm -hmm. the organization that finds the solution yep. comes out on top. I want our state to be the organization that finds the solution. I would agree with that. It's Might I offer it's this, since I've, I've, and I think it meant, but someone has said here, I don't think this legislation is going to solve this problem. And, and many of the issues that have come up in this discussion, we, we recognized, and there were provisions in there to try to, well, not clawback provisions, that, that's something to, to hook the pilot, to hook the CFI, uh, we've, we've discussed that. But perhaps what this, I mean, that bill will be there, there are deadlines, but I'm kind of hearing what I'm, I'm gonna suggest is, in a sense, tabling this, or putting it off simply, and establishing a committee headed up by you, Commissioner Hunter, if you'd agree, okay. with, with you, Commissioners Conway and Ritz, who have been around this issue a long time in your various roles and capacities. And if it's a marketing strategy, which uh, uh, absolutely, but that's something, of course, that costs money, but what can we do and could we partner with? You mentioned Career Tech. Metro Tech thought about a program years ago. Uh, kind of got, well, OSU's doing it, OU's doing it, Southeastern's doing it. We're not gonna do it. Uh, because Metro Tech has a big aviation program, but it's focused on A&Ps, avionics technicians, etc. And they're saturating the market with A&Ps that aren't going to have jobs if there aren't pilots. Well, I, I, I can certainly understand <laughs> and appreciate that argument. I think as long as Tinker's here, they'll have jobs, but I hear what you're saying. It, the, uh, the Air Force deals, itself has, yeah, what is uh, it, 20,000 pilot shortage this year? Yeah. Would what I've suggested, correct, would that be of the pleasure, perhaps, of the commission to, to Let's let's I think drill that's down a smart on this. Thing to do because let's for, set up a round table. Vote. Bring in other organizations that are okay. that have a common the common goal. The 99s, the EAA, those organizations. I met with one of the vice presidents of EAA a couple. It was probably a month, month and a half ago. Who would love to be involved because their objectives are the same as ours, and that's saving an industry. If that industry goes away. We all feel it. Okay. Uh, Fine, fine of me. We can do that. Bring in Career Tech, bring in the. the I told you when I walked in the door today that I didn't think that this this legis legislative effort was enough or would have an impact. And I think what we're seeing from Commissioner Conway and uh, Commissioner Ritz is that uh, an agreement that it's it's not enough. 
I don't know if we even need a motion, but if there be a motion for uh, like to Do we convene have a motion to continue it or well to convene it? a for, to con, to con, to convene a forum to, to yeah. have a discussion of this issue uh, to contemplate yeah, a marketing strategy to partner to with to other even make uh, a decision you know, on it. So um, how about someone give me a motion to explore a committee to explore the or issue? Form. Yes, uh, I'm, I'll make a motion to so move. Yep. Found a committee second. or to explore ways to promote education and aviation and bring up new pilots in our state. Great. I have a motion. I need a second. I'll second it. There we go. Call the roll, please. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Connolly. Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. Great. If I may, if it won't violate any uh, meeting ethics regulations, I'd like to be on that round table as well. Absolutely. 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 If, 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 if I do get... We're not acting as a commission. Let me just say that that's, if I get four of you there, <laughs> it'll have to you be an open meeting. You start getting nervous. It, well, it'll have to be an open meeting because that's you're right. going to be discussing things certainly germane to this commission, and that will be a meeting under the Open Meeting Act, and that's okay. I mean, I don't think that will really present much of a problem. I just want to put that out there. Okay. Do we need to vote on item 10 then? I, I think you just, action, we left that, I think you just have. Okay. The action you've taken, that, that was that was embraced, <laughs> contemplated by the way we did the agenda item. So I, think I appreciate the Senator's efforts, and I want to make clear to him that I definitely appreciate his efforts, but I don't think there's either a full understanding or the will market understanding that okay. $2,500 isn't going to drive in, in a tax credit isn't going to motivate or drive this. We'll, we'll be happy to convey that. We will convey that. We want to keep him. He's, he's always been interested in aviation and aerospace issues. His, his home airport is South Grand Lake where we've done a lot of uh, work and he's been very supportive of that airport. So we'll do that. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Victor. Item 11 is the uh, five-year construction program. Grayson. Commissioners, Mr. Secretary, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Director Bird was mentioning earlier, there was a, uh, and, and first off, one of the reasons we missed it, the title of the section was Recycling Plans in Small Airports. Interesting how federal legislation sometimes works its way. I didn't see one mention of recycling actually in there, but what, what it has done is it has presented these unclassified airports, uh, the 21 unclassified airports, it's given them a little new life of, of federal funding. The, the non-primary entitlement program, which I think everybody is familiar with, the $150,000 a year uh, that general aviation airports get in the state, they're going to be getting this general aviation entitlement again. Uh, it's going to be much more restrictive, though. Uh, some of the restrictions are it's only going to be available for two years, so $300,000 total. However, the funding can't be banked or rolled over like it typically can for four years. So it's basically a use it or lose it proposition each year. Uh, we've got some inventive ways we're going to try and, and help airports with that because as you can imagine, having a contractor start a project, $150,000, stop, start again, $150,000, that's not gonna be, uh, you're not gonna get a whole lot of stuff done uh, with that time period. Uh, secondly, it can only be used on the runway. So there's very limited project scopes that it can be used on, so runway pavement, runway lights, safety areas, obstruction removal, so on and so forth. Um, this is a good thing because a lot of these airports, uh, unless they were touched by OAC state dollars, have not seen any kind of repairs or improvements since the last time they got dollars in federal fiscal year 2013. Um, so what, what we're pr proposing, the, uh, the thought that we're proposing, is to group these airports together, one, for efficiency purposes, uh, several other states around us will do this. They will group these, what I di dictate, small pavement maintenance or, or lighting rehabilitation projects. They'll group them together, give, bid them as maybe four or five as a group. Uh, to get a contractor, he's going to know he can go from airport one, two, three, four, five. So he's going to have a work timeline. And so therefore, maybe he'll give some better bid prices on, on his construction. Uh, Along with that, a lot of these cities and towns, because they have not taken a grant since federal fiscal year 2013, they don't remember the process of how to work the FAA grant, the, the FAA grant system. Uh, city managers have turned over, mayors have turned over, whole city councils 
may have turned over since federal fiscal year 2013. Uh, and so the couple airports that I have talked to that I knew they were city managers, they, they had no idea, no realization, didn't even realize they're in the NIPIUS anymore uh, because of the fact that they weren't getting any more federal dollars. So what we're proposing in front of you today, and there is a, 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 an agenda item tab uh, back there behind 11A, as Director Bird was mentioning, this is kind of the, here's what we're doing, here's the, the 15 or so airports uh, that we're considering grouping together. Um, for, the, for this time period, but, but what we would like to do is group these together. Uh, if the airports request it, and I think a lot of them will, act as their agent to begin the federal grant process, to select a consultant. Uh, I think we'll probably select maybe one or two or three consultants to do these groups. Uh, that way we can get some economies of scale uh, and be able to utilize what's actually a very finite federal resource for these airports and use it as efficiently as possible. Uh, so that's, that's really the, uh, the proposition before you today is putting these airports in the ACP, uh, moving out for the RFQ, the consultant selection process. We'll come back to you at the March meeting and probably the May meeting as well for more approvals as to the specific project for each individual airport uh, and, and for the approvals of expending any dollars in terms of the consultant contract, so on and so forth. But really today what we're requesting is to, do you like this idea? And if so, moving forward with this idea to really give FAA, because if, if not, we need to let FAA know so that way FAA can then go to the individual airports and each airport can do their own thing to expend their own dollars on these, on these projects over the next two years. So that's the, uh, the general consensus of what staff is recommending, but I'll stand for questions, comments, or concerns. What kind of workload do you I don't anticipate adding a whole lot. Uh, the, the real big workload is going to be getting information from the cities, the request letters to act as agent. Uh, once we have a consultant on board, they're going to be the ones that will be doing most of the work in terms of the paperwork, the administration, the getting the grants, doing the design, the bidding. For us, it'll be on the front end, it'll be planning staff, collecting those letters of interest, figuring out which projects we're going to do, and then on the back end, uh, potentially uh, some of the grant reimbursements and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's not like, Commissioner, like we did it for Durant, where we had a, a project from the beginning and then worked it way through its whole. That was a much more intensive process because it was a, it was a big project. It was runway extension, right. runway maintenance. Or, and this is going to be mainly crack steel seal coats, maybe a couple lighting projects, maybe an obstruction removal or a tree removal of some sort. But mostly it's going to be crack steel seal coats for about 90% of these airports. Grayson, help me understand. This is $150,000 per airport? Per airport per, per year per for year. the two years. But so use or lose. Use or lose it. So that's, thank you for bringing that up, Commissioner. Uh, one of the things that FAA is going to allow these airports to do is, is a multi-year grant proposition. And because we have a five-year FAA reauthorization, uh, they'll be able to multi-year their grants. And so one of the first questions we're going to ask the airports is, okay, can you take a multi-year grant? And what are some of the innovative ways that we can help you out doing a $300,000 project and doing it all at once. Likely because this is a, a new program and regardless of the direction that, that you all take and that the airports take, uh, it's likely that a grant for these projects won't come out until the very end of the federal fiscal year in September. Therefore, it's likely that we won't get construction started until next spring because of the winter setting in. Uh, so really what we're talking about is the city, uh, or potentially if, if the city can't, uh, the commission fronting money for maybe a, a grand total of six months. Because if you figure if you're starting construction in the you know, March time period, next federal fiscal year grants are going to come out probably in the July to August time period. So you're really looking at a pretty small window. There might be a few construction projects that could get started before winter sets in, but I don't imagine, given this is a new program, everybody's going to have to go through it, clean slate. Uh, it, we're going to be getting grants at the very tail end of the federal fiscal year. It's going to be a rush to get in before the deadline. So. Grayson, all of these 21 are aware and are working on what they might want to use it for? Some of them are, some of them are not. Okay. Um, we are, based upon what you all decide today, we will make sure that the airports know one way or the other what the, uh, what the goals are. I have talked to some of them just to kind of get a preliminary taste, and that's kind of what led us to this particular agenda item. And there are some airports out there that are doing projects, like for example, Clinton Sherman. 
they're unclassified because they don't have any based aircraft, but they are actively working with the consultant. So they're not going to need to be a part of this group because they already have those services. They've been using a consultant for their monies that they get from the Air Force on a regular basis. And there's a few other airports out there that are like that that have been doing local projects that won't need, that have that expertise, that already have somebody on board. But for the 15 or 16 or so, they will probably need our help uh, should we be able to offer that to them. Is Clinton Sherman funding that through OSIDA? Or? It, yeah, through OSIDA, uh, through the, the joint use agreement they have with the Air Force, they get about a million, million and a half a year for maintenance of the runway so that they can keep that up and do touch and goes for uh, Air Education Training Command. Great. This will be a, this will be a, probably they'll be able to get maybe a couple of panels replaced with that $150,000 because I'm sure that concrete, <laughs> they'll help fix that concrete that <coughs> <really soon. coughs> it's, it's, it's thick concrete out there. It's thick stuff. Figured it'd be more so. than that. Landed B-36s out there. Yeah. 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 So you need. <coughs> so the staff recommends that we move forward with the, uh, the agenda item. Um, as I've stated it here to you today, that we're going to move forward with the RFQ process, grouping these airports together, uh, and inserting them into the ACP. And Great. staff recommends approval. Move and approval. I need a second. Call the roll, please, Jane. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. And uh, item B, so this is one that would be a, a separate, perfect example, commissioners, separate uh, project. They're unclassified. As you all know, the, uh, the agreement we have with the, the Kirk Humphreys company that's going to be building hangars, um, since they are getting federal dollars, and they're actually already in the ACP for a project in a year, uh, we thought maybe it'd be best to move this project forward. Because we don't want to go out there, build hangars, build fuel, base 11 aircraft as is anticipated and then have to close the runway down 12 months from that time which we've actually built those hangars in partnership with with Kirk Humphreys. Um, so the, the thought was uh, we bring forward this runway project to rehabilitate the pavement, put in lights, rotating beacon pappies, uh, that sort of thing, bring it forward so that we can run it concurrently with the hangar project which we hope to start sometime this spring when, when weather allows. Uh, so that's, that's what this agenda item is proposing. It's an existing project. We're adding some scope to it, and we're moving it forward a year so that we can use those, those federal dollars that they're going to be getting now as an unclassified airport. So I'll stand for any questions, but staff recommends approval. Rick, let me ask you a question. Have we resolved the other issues out at Carlton Landing, uh, as it's referred to, regarding the water line? We are in process of doing that. I know uh, the consultant that's working on it had a meeting with uh, ODEQ yesterday. And I know uh, Narconon, we are working through them to try and figure out how we can relocate that water line, if they're going to participate, and what they're going to allow us to do. So that, that is, that is going to be the, the first project that has to happen, is moving that water line. And then obviously from there, the hangars, fuel, and apron project would go on at that same time, shortly thereafter. Correct, right, yeah, $300,000 will be coming from the federal government, and then the commission will be three fifty. dollars correct. Timing is one. And that's, just, that's just an estimate, Commissioner, it, it may be less than that. Obviously, we're going to soak up all the federal dollars we can get, and if it's less than that, Commissioner's share, commission share will be less than. And, and as we've discussed with you all before, the good news is here about Carlton Landing is <coughs> when this is done, uh, Kirk Humphreys has pretty much guaranteed or stated pretty unequivocally he will have nine based aircraft there, which will then make him eligible, henceforth, that airport eligible for the federal non primary grant of $150,000 annually. Who will be using this airport other than Kirk Humphreys? So there's, there's several uh, folks and companies in the area, both in Eufaula and the Lake area. So it'll be one, a, a recreational airport. No, 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 no. it's, yeah, he, it's, yeah. he is the one He's building the hangars it. in partnership with us, but then he has several, last I, last I heard from him, he had at least 11 aircraft other than himself that want to base out at the airport. So 
and uh, by support and his real estate development over there. And it supports <laughs> the new Carlton Landing Please community. Community, yeah. How long is the runway there? Thirty five hundred by sixty. Hmm. Is there any way to extend it? There's been discussions there about that. There's a little little bit of room. Uh, it will I don't think it'll ever be a five thousand foot runway, but we might be able to make it to four. Sounds good. I need a motion. I move for approval. <clears throat> Second. Jane, call the roll, please. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Great, thank you. Item 12 is a monumental <laughs> item on here. I've sat up here for 20 years, 22 actually, but 20 for you, and uh, three different times as chairman, I've invited you up here to brief us on whatever little item is going to be, and uh, this is your last time, sir. I've looked forward to it also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first item is for a, a follow-on to what Grayson just presented at Carlton Landing, which is a state-owned airport. Uh, this project will be for the staff to move uh, forward and contract with the engineering firm to do the design work for the project that Grayson just identified, the uh, crack seal seal coat, install new lights, beacon, and obstruction removal. Staff recommends approval. I move in for approval. Second. All right. Call the roll, please. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Great. Thank you. And thank you, Dale. One thank you. last time. And I'm back. <laughs> the next item is for a, a brief update on all the active projects that uh, are currently in the construction phase, design phase, and preliminary engineering report. The first item is at uh, Altus. That project is to install new runway lights and odals. Uh, the project is being completed this week. That's the good news, it's about to be completed. Next one's a Broken Bow. We installed the uh, new take taxi lane apron area for uh, new hangar development. Uh, the final inspection was held on December 12th. Ben and I went out for that. Project was real good, it looks good. At Bristow, we're constructing the new runway uh, 240 feet east of the existing runway. And then we'll convert the uh, current runway into a taxiway in the future. Uh, that project is currently underway. They're doing the earth work. Uh, that's scheduled to be uh, completed in September of 2019. Carlton Landing, the hangar development that uh, Grayson was talking about, uh, the, pro the plans, re the design is completed and ready to go to bid. Uh, once the uh, agreement for the water line and the water line gets relocated, they're going to the uh, construction phase. At Clinton Regional, that is also to uh, install new uh, runway lights and pappies. Uh, the contractor for that for at Clinton is the same contractor that's doing the work down at Altus. Uh, once they complete the Altus project, they'll relocate up to Clinton and start the uh, Clinton work. At Durant Regional Airport, uh, to extend the runway 1,800 feet and then overlay the existing 5,000 foot runway, uh, <clears throat> they have displaced the uh, threshold at the 3-5 end and they currently have 3,500 feet of active runway and they're currently working on the uh, the dirt work for the runaway extension. And once they get that shaped up and ready to go, then they'll move into the uh, final paving. And that project uh, anticipated to be completed in October of 2019. El Reno, the uh, fuel installation of a new fuel farm and removal of the existing fuel farm. And then they'll take out the old apron there and construct a new taxi lane connecting the uh, uh, connector and, the ma and a new apron. Uh, due to the uh, lengthy time that it takes to get the uh, new fuel farm uh, developed and on site. They're going to start in February this year on the new fuel system. Once that completed, uh, then they'll move into the paving section. They're expected to be done next November. At Enid, we're uh, tearing down the old uh, terminal building, constructing a new terminal building. They're uh, pouring the pad this week for the, the new building, and they're expected to be uh, completed in July of uh, 19. Fairview Municipal, the construction of the uh, new parallel uh, south portion of the parallel taxiway system. They've uh, got the earthwork done. They're currently uh, putting down the ag base, and then they'll move into the uh, concrete and the paving section. 
and their schedule will be completed in late March of this year. Guyman, they're doing the lights and saw new runway lights and the omnidirectional approach lighting system off the end of the runway. Uh, construction is going to begin in, in mid March. Ida Bell McCurtain County, we're constructing the, uh, the, south, uh, the south portion of the taxiway, the, the yellow area, the red area we completed a year or two ago. Uh, they've been blasting, there's a lot of rock down there. Uh, they've completed the blasting and they've about completed the uh, rock removal. And once that, they'll move into the dirt work to uh, do the rough grading and shape the uh, taxiway system. I think Joe told me it was going to be completed, but I forgot. Uh, McAllister, the, the uh, reconstructing the green areas there, the total reconstruction on that south 1,600 feet, and then reconstructing the uh, keel 50 feet section of the runway. Uh, all the existing pavement has been removed. They've got the uh, stabilized subgrade down, and they expect to start putting down the new pavement in the next couple of weeks, and they expect to be completed with that project in May of 19. Prior Mid-America, it's another uh, lighting project. Uh, they're installing a new automated weather observation system, uh, new pappies, new runway uh, end identifiers, and rotating beacon. Those are all state-funded items. The uh, uh, installation of new runway lights is being federally funded at the same time. Uh, currently, the runway is closed while they're doing the lighting project, and they expect to be completely done in early March with that project. Muskogee uh, constructing a uh, hard uh, concrete hard stand in the uh, main asphalt parking apron. Uh, ben and I went out for the final ins or, or going out on the final inspection on that on January 18th. So the work there is completed. At Stillwater, uh, they're constructing a, a standard parallel taxiway, which you're seeing in red there, and then going to remove the existing diagonal old Delta taxiway, which is in yellow. Uh, the bypass on the main apron has been completed. It's completed construct, uh, construction. Uh, they're currently uh, putting down the base, uh, expect to be done putting the base material down in the next couple of weeks, and they'll move into moving the uh, uh, concrete pay, uh, surface course. And they expect to be completed in May of actually 2019, not 18. As South Grand Lake Regional, they're doing a drainage improvement. Uh, this is just simply cleaning out the, the creeks downstream to get the water off the airport. And it's a small project that the airport is working to get the, uh, some quotes to, to get the work done. At Texhoma, which is about 10 miles south of Guyman, uh, if you recall, this project, uh, the county had gone in there and rubbleized all the existing pavement and compacted it and the city had asked for our assistance in putting down a new asphalt surface course uh, and the uh, I have spoken with the uh, division engineer for ODOT out there and he has agreed that uh, ODOT will provide the field inspection so thank you Secretary Patterson uh, the contractor has relocated back into the Guyman area so as soon as they get a break in the weather they're going to try to get the asphalt down. At Watonga, we're installing a new uh, AWOS, Automated Weather Observation System. They expect to start that project in January, and that only usually takes a week or two to get that work done. Wiley Post, uh, they installed a new uh, taxiway lights on taxiway alpha and taxiway uh, alpha five and alpha eight. The work on alpha eight has been completed, and they're currently working on alpha five and they expect to be completed in March of this year. At Will Rogers, we're doing some uh, pavement reconstruction and strengthening around an apron. Uh, the work's been completed. The contractor is working on the punch list, and so that work should be completed and closed out in the next couple of weeks. Projects in the design phase at this time is at the Ardmore Municipal, uh, the taxiway alpha phase two. Uh, the plans are 90% done. Expect to have those submitted in for, for review in January of 18th. At, Jan at Chandler, they're constructing the new parallel taxiway system. Uh, those plans are 90% complete and have been submitted for our review and FAA's review. At uh, Max Westheimer in Norman, phase one of the taxiway, which was on 1836 runway. Uh, the 90% plans are expected to be completed then by February for review. 
at uh, R.L. Jones in Tulsa, rehabbed the secondary runway, one right, 19 left. Uh, the plans are currently at 50% and expect to have those into us by January 31st. South Grand Lake Regional Airport, which is also constructing a new parallel taxiway system. They have, do not have a taxiway at this time. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the runway project design to rehabilitate, uh, rehabilitate the runway and widen the runway. The 90% uh, plans and specs are, should be in by mid-January. Wiley Post is on the east, doing the east taxiway lights and signage, and they're just now getting started on the design. All those projects will be receiving uh, federal discretionary funds, and so the actual federal funds won't, won't be, uh, be granted until August, so they'll have the designs done well in advance. For the state-only projects, the Okmogee Rehab, the payment project, not the plan specs have been completed and in for review. Okay, the preliminary engineering report program, we started in 2016. All those, uh, all, I think we had seven projects in that group. Uh, that pro all those reports have been completed. Uh, the FA grant has been closed out. Same thing with the FY 2017 program. That FA grant has been closed out also. For the FY 2018 engineering reports at Bristow to construct a parallel taxiway, uh, that report is 40% complete and should have that done in the next couple of weeks. At Grove for the rehabilitation of the runway pavement, upgrade of the lights and signage, uh, Kelly Finn Cannon has submitted that uh, in the first report. We have reviewed the report, submitted our comments back to him. Once those comments are incorporated in the report, He'll send out a hard copy to the city, FAA, and OAC for our final review. At Guyman, we're going to rehabilitate the runway and parallel taxiway system. Uh, that report is, is, will be submitted for the first review next week. At Sky Took, basically reconstruction the runway pavement and upgrading the lights and signage. That uh, report is 80% complete and expect to have that in the next week or two. And then at the 2019 engineering reports, which we're just getting started on at Blackwell Tonkawa, rehab the runway and widen the runway and upgrade lights and signage. Uh, Fairview, which is the NEPA, the environmental documentation. Ida Bell, gonna rehabilitate the runway pavements. Uh, and all these rehabilitations, either gonna be reconstruction or at least a maintenance overlay. Uh, South Grand Lake is the construction of the parallel taxiway system report. And at Watonga, it's to rehabilitate the runway, upgrade the runway and lights and system. We've uh, been in communication with all the uh, engineers that have been selected. We've agreed on the scope of work. Uh, we're currently in the fee negotiation phase at this time and really should have the fees uh, settled by the end of next week or two. And then we will uh, be ready to go to the contract and get those under contract and then send the uh, FAA grant down for their federal funding. And that concludes my report. <laughs> and your career. <laughs> well, <laughs> not till the 31st. Right. <laughs> Where's the X? That's the punctuation's wrong. There needs to be an exclamation point. Uh, I was going to drop a microphone. Uh, two footnotes, commissioners, to Dale's uh, very good report. Thank you, Dale. Is uh, that uh, on the two commercial airports? Uh, Stillwater Regional and Oklahoma City Will Rogers, please keep in mind there's, there's, and Stillwater is commercial now. When we began that project, it was not, had not been reclassified as primary yet. But there is nothing in our statute at all uh, that precludes us from making investments in commercial airports. Uh, when you approve the grant to Oklahoma City Will Rogers, I believe it was $250,000. That was uh, very supported by the governor, as well as the Secretary of Commerce, Secretary Patterson. It was a good project. It has to do with a hangar out there and an economic development project and work needed to be done. And the state wanted to support that whole effort. And the state supported that effort through the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. So. Quick question. With the... Uh, we just don't do that often because of our limited resources. <laughs> Just real quick, you know, they're building the new uh, deal out, the terminal out there at Rogers. Is OAC going to get involved in any of that concrete or? Not at this no. time. Okay. No. And it's, 
think that has started, so that was, yeah, I think. Yeah, about so three yesterday. Be, you know, they, they didn't approach us, and their terminals tend to cost a little bit more, so their terminal work, so I appreciate that. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Item 13. Commissioners, this is uh, simply renewing and adding another $50,000 to our flight inspection agreement with the FAA Flight Inspection Services Office. Um, not only are these flight inspections for projects that, that we pay for as a state, but we also pay for or help cities fund uh, for their NPE only projects. If it's an NPE only project, we then get reimbursed. So this $50,000 is going back into the contract because our contract numbers continually gone down and we need to refresh so that we can schedule some more flight inspections. So stand before you for an additional $50,000 and to allow Vic, Director Bird, to renew the agreement. I'll stand for any questions. Move approval. Second. Call the roll, please. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Great. Item 14. Item 14 is our uh, annual membership dues to the Oklahoma Airport Operators Association. Uh, this year, the uh, annual conference will be in, well, technically Tulsa, but I believe it's going to be Broken Arrow at the Broken Arrow Conference Center. Uh, this will be the partnership conference, which we do about once every three years. Uh, we do it in partnership with the South Central chapter of the AAAE organization. So not only will it just be Oklahoma, but it will be many of the surrounding states we have uh, as well. So I'd encourage any of you all that you can make it up to Tulsa uh, to do so. It'll be a good conference, and I know we're going to try and get some some big folks there. I think we'll be able to get some D.C. people in for, uh, to do uh, some presentations as well since we'll have a, a larger contingent of airports at the conference. Uh, but staff would request uh, renewing that membership for $5,000. Um, we're asking Governor Lake City as well. Yes. Great. Questions? Oh uh, yes, yeah, staff recommends approval. Yeah, those famous <coughs> words. I move. Famous, famous words. I move to approve. Second. Call the roll. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Item 15, uh, briefing on the Aviation and Aerospace Day. <coughs> morning, Commissioners, again. Uh, as we have spoken before, <coughs> Aerospace Day at the Capitol is going to be March 19th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, it, it's at this time, Commissioners, I would ask you to start reaching out to your relationships within the aviation and aerospace community, calling these companies, saying, hey, have you spoken to Sandra? I, you need to exhibit out there. We need uh, Commissioner Ritz, uh, Commissioner Conway, Commissioner Amos, Commissioner Hunter. I know that Sundance will be there. And Commissioner Putnam, I hope that EAA will come out and have a booth. But we really need you to reach out to your um, heavy hitters. We need we need those big aerospace companies to take the time and come to Aerospace Day. This year, we are looking to, last year we had about 65 booths this year. I'm estimating we'll probably have about 80 booths. And so uh, we're also uh, going to have a career fair in tandem with the day, allowing people to come and visit the aerospace and aviation companies that exhibit to talk to them about careers. So I'm asking them to bring HR people as well with them uh, to, to the Capitol. So uh, we look forward to that, and I would yield for any questions or ideas that you might have, you can call me at any time. Uh, I also brought uh, calendars, uh, our aviation art contest. Um, this leads me into number 16. Um, yes, sure. Uh, uh, commissioners, this, this was a huge success last year, Air Oklahoma Day. And we, we had to turn folks away that wanted to exhibit. So just I'm, I want to make it kind of I'm stating this for the public record. Uh, I told Sandra I'd take this off her. I'll be the bad guy. But we're going to have to, we're going to, in a sense, this year, obviously, aerospace, aviation, that's first. And, of course, uh, in airports, that's all first. And, and then if there is still room, uh, education programs, aviation education programs, they're a part of all that. So they'll be covered. Uh, but last year there were some entities that, well, we want three booths because we do these, that, and we had to curtail that last year, and that will not even, we're not even going to entertain that this year. And it's just because 
we've, had, we've added a floor. Uh, they're not adding a floor at the state capitol as part of the uh, rehabilitation, so we're, we're, we're on as many floors as we can be, there's, and there's just a, there's a limit. Uh, so we're gonna have a pecking order, and I, I think that's, that's only fair. Northrop Grumman is also working with us to bring the B2 uh, uh, Orange County Chopper bike there. So we're have, hoping to have some static displays on the plaza there too, weather permitting. So I, I'm hoping that's gonna be a, a bigger day than last year and eventually we'll probably have to move it to the Cox Center and it'll be a wonderful time for everyone. So uh, that brings us to the Aviation Education Art Contest program uh, that we are conducting currently. Catherine and Jennifer and Michelle are on a MAR team and they will be helping us um, to process these. And Commissioner Ritz is our celebrity judge, one of our celebrity judges this year. So she will be helping with that. And there will be a day at the Capitol that I will extend the invitation like I did last year for everyone to join us in the governor's blue room. Just don't talk to each other. How many, how many <laughs> entries last year, Sandra? Last year we had um, just under 1,200. So it's grown every year. I, I hope that we are maintaining that. Uh, so. I, ho I hope to have a, as many entries as, as possible. Commissioner Hunter, we're hoping to con make 200 pilots out of that. But I mean, th this is part of our whole aviation and aerospace education program to try to get young people interested in careers in aviation and aerospace. And if I could also speak to that director since you brought that up just briefly, um, AO AOPA sent out uh, a curriculum invitation and it's concluding in February and we encourage all of the schools. So I sent it out to 2,300 emails, 500 schools within the state of Oklahoma, including private schools and all kinds of schools to pursue using the free aviation curriculum that AOP puts out, AOPA puts out. And so I have had probably five different schools contact me and they are smaller schools. Uh, Commissioner Conway from your district, Kingston has reached out to me and Atoka and we are asking them to emulate the, the ADA program since it's been so which, successful. Which is the AOPA curriculum. Yes, so if you have uh, connections over at Kingston, Commissioner Conway, and you'd like to visit with them, I, I believe uh, their superintendent or uh, principal is a pilot of, of many years. So uh, I'd be happy to visit with you on that. If you would like to contact schools within your district about encouraging them, I would be happy to work with you as well as Catherine on that. Okay. Uh, the events is uh, in your folder and for the public. We have events here. And don't forget, you can always purchase your aviation license plate. It is a brand new year. The commissioners have white folders instead of blue. We are on fire for aviation. And I would yield for questions. I was just going to ask you about the white folders. Is that it's because it is a brand new year and we have a clean slate. We're ready 2019. We're ready to pursue pilots and make beautiful airports and and encourage and foster the aviation community. And there was a discount. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 there's, were there's that. <laughs> a truer Vic Bird statement has never been <laughs> yes. made before. And uh, just a quick question about the Aviation Day. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out to, uh, and I'll put Envoy Air out there, that'd be a great time to bring somebody like that in and show what opportunities are out there for young aviators. I know that won't be the, the audience necessarily, but you're gonna have people in the audience that will go back and say, this opportunity now exists. So when I went to the conference for the 99s in Philadelphia, that this is what inspired me to do this, is they okay. had in tandem with their conference a uh, career fair and Envoy came. Mm -hmm. And that's how I knew that Envoy was okay. doing that. And I actually talked to the city of Enid about applying to be an Envoy school there and using the Enid Woodring Airport and so I've been in contact with okay. a person named Kurt Rogo on that issue. But um, yes, I'm aware of the Envoy program and okay. I will reach out to them, sir. Okay. Mr. Conway, that's an excellent point. So we, we all, we do reach out, of course, to American Southwest because they certainly have a presence in Oklahoma City. But I think what we'll do, because American, American Eagle, as Commissioner Ritz knows well about from our work on the OU Aviation Advisory Board, they have a program that's to address the issue too of a shortage of pilots. So I think it would be good on our part to reach out to every regional airline. And SkyWest, of course, has a sure. presence now in Oklahoma City with its maintenance center on the east side of Will Rogers. But we'll make sure they know that part of this Aero Oklahoma Day this year is the career fair. Great. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Commissioners. Please Thank call you. me if you have ideas. Thank Great. you. Great. Item 17 is our uh, executive session. 
I need a motion to go into that. I'd like to make a motion that the commission go into executive session. Second. Call the roll. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. At this time, we ask that the um, room be cleared. This is open. The door. Aye. Aye. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion to for the board. I'd like to make a motion that I move to continue the appointment of Victor Bird as our director and to increase his salary by seven thousand. $277.82 to the statutory limit of $119,681. Second. Call the roll, please. Vice Chair Amos. Aye. Secretary Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. All right. Item 18, concluding remarks. Anybody have anything? I do not. I have kind so, of a fun little you, item. Yeah. I was traveling yesterday and the day before on the Southwest Airlines, and as you know, we lost Herb Kelleher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was chatting with the flight attendants on the airplane, and uh, just on a side, one of them pulled up her uh, iPhone and showed me a Facebook page where the whole skyline of Dallas Reunion Tower and the uh, TCB and all that was all lit up in Southwest colors, and the, the Reunion Tower had the Southwest heart going around it with mm -hmm. Herb Kelleher going around it. And uh, additionally, they said that uh, at 7.37 tonight, <laughs> the entire Southwest employee population is going to toast with a shot of wild turkey, which was Herb's elixir. And uh, I think I'm going to join him. I read his book, the book, and uh, always been really impressed with Southwest, flown him a lot. And uh, so at 7.37, I'll be toasting Herb with some wild turkey. I'll along do the with same. Thousands of others. I invite you to do the same. Anything else? New business? Next meeting is, what's the date? March something. It is the 6th at 10 o'clock here at the Transportation Commission. Okay. The 6th March 2019 on Wednesday is our next meeting. Any new business? Old business, we are adjourned.